Baby Leo is 10 days old. At birth, he had a brain hemorrhage. His life now hangs in the balance. There's a tube for feeding, one for breathing. The remaining tubes are washing his brain. The brain does have uh, quite uh, extraordinary capacities for recovery, for rewiring, and particularly in the premature baby, where the brain is at a, a relatively undeveloped stage, it seems that there are quite uh, powerful repair mechanisms. Uh, the brain washing procedure, we hope, will allow these uh, brain repair mechanisms to, to occur and therefore improve the long-term outcome. Zoe also had a brain hemorrhage during her mother's long and difficult labour. The worst case scenario would be that she had uh, very severe brain damage, which could entail her not being able to use the right side of her body, um, learning difficulties, uh, pro possibly problems with her vision. Um, so she could have been very seriously disabled. Today, Zoe is as healthy as any other one-year-old thanks to the pioneering brainwashing technique devised by Professor Andrew Whitelaw and colleagues at Southmead Hospital in Bristol, England. The procedure he's developed is a way of washing out the blood clots from a newborn baby's tiny brain. A brain hemorrhage is one of the greatest dangers to the newborn child. It can lead to severe disability or even death. Timing is crucial. After a brain hemorrhage, the longer the brain is left untreated, the more permanent the damage is likely to be. From our experience with 19 babies so far, that uh, if we leave it until after three weeks, that may be too late. The hemorrhage stops the natural flow of blood around the brain. When the blood clots, it causes swelling of fluid on the brain, a condition known as hydrocephalus. Conventional treatment involves puncturing the baby's head and inserting a permanent tube, or shunt, to drain the brain, which itself can cause serious damage. A significant number of the babies who require this kind of procedure end up ultimately with, with some kind of disability, such as cerebral palsy or some other kind of long-term problem with their development. So the long-term consequences can be really quite tragic for the children and for their families. If the insertion of the shunt doesn't cause damage, then it can become blocked and infected. Meningitis may then set in. Professor Whitelaw hopes his new brainwashing technique will be a far safer and superior alternative to conventional treatment. Two tubes have been inserted into Leo's brain. One takes the clot dissolving liquid into the ventricles of the brain. The other takes the fluid and old blood away. The fluid draining out of the brain comes through this tube and is collected first in this reservoir and then every hour the fluid is allowed to drain into this big bag. When we start off uh, draining um, the fluid out, when we start brainwashing, the fluid generally looks uh, dark red like Coca-Cola or uh, Beaujolais wine and we hope that it will go through um, a progression um, becoming pink like rosé wine. This is not quite, this is more like tea really, isn't it? Um, then going through rosé and then uh, a fine yellow colour like scotch whisky and then um, a slightly off-white colour, a bit like white wine, uh, finally ending up um, looking like uh, vodka. And this usually takes about three days or so and at the end of this time uh, we've generally removed as much of the old blood clot and the other harmful substances that we know that are released uh, by hemorrhage into the brain uh, as we can. When the liquid becomes almost clear, the clots from the hemorrhage will have been washed away, the damage limited, and with luck, the young brain will recover. We've got to this point, really, because of all the other treatments being so bad. For 25 years or so, we've been aware that part of the price of saving lots of babies' lives is that you do get some babies that are brain damaged in different ways. And uh, I have been evaluating different treatments for brain hemorrhages since 1981, actually. And I've systematically showed that none of them work. And in fact, uh, they nearly all make the situation even worse. It's not a solution. It's not a cure. And we are going for a cure. 
The next few days will be crucial for Leo, but it's hoped, like Zoe, the brainwashing treatment will be a success. Well, we've been washing out uh, the brain for about 30 hours now, and things are going quite satisfactorily at the moment. He's remained uh, stable in himself, and uh, we're going to press on for uh, the full 72 hours and see how much the drainage fluid clears. Leo's brainwave recording after the washing showed that some early seizures had normalized. After six days, he came off the ventilator and began to breathe for himself. He's now able to digest some milk, and Professor Whitelaw is hopeful that his progress will continue. It's hoped the procedure can be simplified further and adopted more widely, so that babies like Zoe, who have brain hemorrhages in the future, may avoid serious surgery and possible brain damage as well. She can live a normal life. Um, there's no risk of any further brain damage. Um, and she can just do everything that all the other kids can do.